Okay, I'm going to show you uh, the easiest way I know to get an animation like this. It's not perfect, but it's pretty quick. So I'm going to start off with just the model I've got. Start over, and I'm going to add a rig to it. Do that, I'm going to add armature. And uh, to make this easier, I'm going to make it be in front. Okay. So I'm going to go into edit mode on the armature. I'm going to start moving the bones around. So uh, I'm going to move it with the G button. Press the G button to move it straight upwards, and that's going to be our root bone. And now I'm going to add all the legs. And since this is a symmetrical model, it's the same on the left and right. And I've made it sure that it's uh, symmetrical across the red line. X axis. You can turn on X axis mirroring up here. For some reason, it only works like this. Blender expects you to have characters facing this way, so that when you press the negative Y, you're looking at its face. So that's the way we have it here. And since that's all set up, I press Shift instead of E. It'll extrude two bones from this root bone. And then uh, I'm just going to use the tweak tool or to place it in place. All right, and I'm going to do that again for each bone. Shift. And the right. Press Z, you can wireframe mode. It'll be a little easier. I'm going to grab the top of the root bone. More or less in the right. Now we just I'm gonna get it from the front. Normally extruding out, mirroring automatic. Pressing E, grabbing place somewhere. I'm gonna add one extra bone. They're basic bones for the structure itself. I'm gonna add one extra bone straight down. Uh, and this is going to control the rest of now you're not symmetrical you don't have to use the x thing it take you a little longer uh, x mirroring you can use this method for any amount of legs it really the more legs the time in terms of animating each leg so now that we have this, we're going to disconnect these bones, control bones, because look at this in pose mode. We move around this root bone. We do everything move. Uh, so what I'm going to do is edit mode. Select all of these. Shift key and left, and I'm going to press Alt. Clear parent. Now these are disconnected. Look, uh, move this now. Those are completely unrelated. So now we have to add a relation back to the face. We're going to select the control bone first and hold shift and select the last bone in the left. Press shift I to active bone. And now if I move this, the whole thing wobbles. Isn't actually what we want. With all the other legs. So we're gonna click on this, and under here, under bone constraints, the IK constraint, and it's used for all kinds of uh, limb animation, anything with multiple bones. There's a lot of settings here you can change. You can set it to track to the rotation of this one, which can have issues, uh, but can be useful as well just to make animation easier. We're going to change the chain length, the number of legs, or the number of bones that are in this leg. So you can just look at the visual actually. And once it's pointing at the uh, first bone in the leg, you can look at that, move it around. That's just the way. We'll repeat that for each leg. Holding shift, selecting the last bone, after selecting the control bone. 
pressing shift I. And then here's a new trick you can select with shift select all of the bone or all of the bones. And over here in the bone constraints, uh, if you change the change length only for one leg, if you hold alt and change the chain length, it changes for every leg. And let's I think I actually have a different amount of bones in some of these legs. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of extra work. Uh, that saves you a little time, especially when you have lots and lots. So we have these all the way we want it. And you'll notice that if you move the root bone, all the other legs will move along with it. So that's good. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot this stuff. You can do it at any time. You can delete these bones. They were just there to help us. Save us a little time. Now we can delete. Uh, so now we have this whole rig up. Um, one th thing is you'll want to uncheck the deform check mark under this bone settings. All of these control bones, and I'm holding Alt that's on all of them. Uh, the only thing that does that changes the export a little bit uh, for performance, but most importantly is that when I do uh, in object mode, shift select the armature. When I do auto weights, I'm doing Control P using armature to perform with automatic weights. It is now going to ignore those non deformed bones because they don't have that check mark. Uh, since I didn't add bones for like the head and antenna stuff, it might be a little messed up. I'm going to look at now and wait in mode. And oh, I have to uncheck lock object modes. I'll make this easy to do in mode. To do it. Um, shift select the weight paint mode, and now you can control click all these bones and paint them. Uh, I always have set to auto normalize the options, change the fall off to projection and the brush front faces only. It's optional, but it'll help us paint this one in one model. You might not have to. Try not to paint the leg. Don't spend too much time making a print. So now, go back into pose mode. See that the mesh itself. Is moving. So it's all rigged all how we want it. Um the last thing we have to do is to animate it. So I'm going to select all of the control bones at once. And actually what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna move them in a little bit. And we're going to animate it all just with control bones and the root. The rest you could even hide or ignore. I'll leave. Uh, so we're going to go to the animation tab. We're going to start adding key. So I posed it already, but there wasn't any key. Not actually animated yet. Turn auto keying on. Select those again. I'm going to press the key button to grab them. I'm just going to place them where they were. And with this auto keying on, any change you make, create a keyframe wherever you have the cursor selected. I'm going to move the cursor to, say, the 10. You can always change it later. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a loop between 10 and 20. And I'm going to missing that you can always get a little thing press the key button 
and um, I'm going to move it as far forward as I can. So however far forward each step is going to be, I'm going to move every leg at once all the way up. This should actually be the first frame. Uh, default pose is not going to be in it uh, in a walk animation. You don't like uh, go to a neutral pose in the middle of your step. Uh, so the first step is going to be uh, having all of your feet all the way forward. And I'll go to the tenth frame. And this will be all the way. Notice that these controls are only so useful. The way they're set up by default, you can pull them farther than possible, and it looks kind of Superman. So just uh, put it as far as makes sense for the character. Um, and for end, we want to the loop. So I'm going to select the first keyframe duplicate it and put it on the 20 mark. And now we see loops back and forth. We go to playback and that end frame will be able to preview this. If I press space, sort of stick bugging forward and back. Uh, and what's odd about this is that normally if you're walking forward, you don't slide your legs forward back. Pick them up into the air. So I'm going to pick them up. All you have to do is move the controls where you feel they should be, and uh, you can whatever extreme you want, um, whatever way you think looks best for the animation you're trying to make the character you're trying to do. So now when I press play, it looks like it's sort of walking all at once, hopping. The secret here is that we've animated all these legs at once, we didn't have to do them individually stagger them, uh, stagger the keyframes so that only one leg uh, moving, so it looks like each leg is moving independently. So first we have to duplicate 50, all of them, put them end to end so that uh, it starts and ends at the same place. And now we're going to Pick random legs and just select all their keys. And with B, stagger them. Be moving them so that they're not all together. And if, since we created them one at a time, don't just do like first one a little bit, second one a little bit more. Try and make it a little more random. And these frames in the and try to make sure you're moving them so that frames go over uh, this area that you're animating. Zero to twenty. And now, when we press play, see the whole animation. But the issue is, we have all these. If you export it to Unity or something. Uh, that could be an issue depending on what you export it to. So we're going to trim the beginning and end. I'm going to add a keyframe, first frame, add a keyframe at the last. I'm just pressing grab and clicking, and this auto keyframe does it. And I'm going to select all those, delete the keyframes outside of the range we're animating. But still the same animation, just without the other frame. And finally, you can add a little bit more character and movement by uh, moving the root bone around. I don't want to move it too much because, uh, again, if I moved it up here, it would mess up the animation. Because the legs can only go so far. And rotate it a little, whatever. Uh, it so, gonna do last framing. So there we go. Uh, you can tweak it a little bit when you're making it to make sure that the legs don't overlap. Which 
design the character so that the legs uh, can't overlap, stuff like that. You can experiment a lot with uh, the IK settings. You can even, um, for each individual bone, you can choose uh, for it to only rotate in a certain way, like mechanical objects. I guess stiffer. There's a lot of uh, you can tweak and learn in this process. This is that I know of. And made a whole bunch of uh, legs at once. 